Hey everyone, I'm Will and in this video I take my friend Michael out into Fjordland for really what is pretty much a standard day here of waterfalls, mountains and some pretty wild weather. It was a really fun time and he managed to create a beautiful image which you'll see in the video. I've also included a raw file from the day that if you want to download this you can have a play and do an edit on the file yourself. It's shot on a Sony a7R4. The link is below and if you do process this I'd love to see your results so feel free to tag me if you post it anywhere. Anyway, hope you enjoy, thanks for tuning in. People ask about shooting in the rain, well this is how I like to do it. Camera and a nice big microfiber towel, that's it, ready to go. We'll try and get down to this uh, river bank down here, you'll see as we get down there man huge wall of uh, waterfalls, mountains. Oi, here we go. So, it's kind of the key now I think is trying to find a good body of water. The thing is, if ever we go that way, it's gonna to start to block the peak, because really that peak there, that's a really good characteristic subject. And then obviously all those waterfalls on the side. That tree is quite nice as well. So if we can use that, maybe we'll have a look. You're just gonna have to handhold it, put it in bracketing, and then just take a series of shots. You need one around 20th, so it's sharp. And then the slower exposures, you can just blend in for that water flow after. So just put in your ideal shutter speed, like say the 20th, yeah. and then it'll do the other two for you. Far out, the rain's picking up though. We better not muck around too long. Just don't want to get stranded out here. <laughs> Mike was all set up there for good composition. Visibility's coming out pretty well. The more layers of detail, you know, now we've got rock then the cascade, then the forest, then the mountain. Yeah, it's sharp to me. F11? Yeah. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I think the visibility is probably the best it's gonna get. Not as good as when we first got here. Yeah, I think once we process that. Yeah, that's sharp. Where's your towel? Still got no towel. Give it a cover it up. I think it's time to probably move on out. It's getting heavier. Go further up the valley and right. see what else we can do. It's all style, all class. A bit of fishing. <laughs> so spotted a really good waterfall coming off the cliffs. Trying to make our way to the river now. Got the waders on. So we're all, all geared up. Just trying to push through to the river. Keeps it spicy. He's not in Sydney anymore. <laughs> I feel like we've just picked the longest way ever to get to the river. <laughs> See the river's edge up here. I think we're good. Looks like we can see that fall. Ah, oh, beautiful. Yo! Just been uh, showing Michael the uh, handheld approach. He's on a DSLR, so he doesn't have the stabilization that I do with the mirrorless, so you can just do two separate exposures, a slow one for the water and then speed things up a bit 
to make it the whole shot sharp and then you can blend that water in later on so much easier than trying to set a tripod up setting a tripod up here and just bringing one in an absolute nightmare so this is easily the best way to approach it you don't even need a mirrorless just dslr two exposures find our way back to the car, back through the, the jungle. Out of the ferns, into the swampland. Alright guys, this is the final composition that we settled on and I'll just briefly explain the theory here with why I thought this was probably the best possible frame on the given day. It was a bit hard to explain out in the field but essentially, obviously the main subject is our waterfall here. That was what I spotted and was attempting to photograph the whole time. Now getting out to the river, rivers obviously create a great way to lead the eye to something. So in this case we're obviously leading it to that waterfall. Now there was a few considerations, I always like to create some kind of natural frame as much as possible so in this case I'm using this rock on the right, this one here on the left and obviously the ones down the bottom as well as a bit of framing so then therefore the river is an open area that the eye can flow along to that main subject. One main consideration was the height, now if I got too low then we would lose this part, the top part of the river and would suddenly jump from the foreground instantly to the background. If I went too high then I lost this rock down the bottom here. It was a bit of a fine balance. Now looking at this image I think I sh hope I probably should have stood up a little bit more just to showcase some more of this lead in up the middle but from memory I, I can recall now that it was a very delicate balance because if I moved a couple of inches then we lost this lower portion pretty quick and it became quite insignificant down the bottom so I was trying to find that happy medium there. Uh, often in my images I'm trying to have people f end up towards this general centralized area of the frame definitely not the corners so that's why I've put the waterfall where I have and what I like about the tree line here is it tapers down back to that center point and obviously it's a big triangle from big to small there flowing down and if you look at the river as well we have that wide opening which also hopefully leads the eye and flows into that centralized part and that's kind of where I'm wanting people to finish. The one part of the image that really bugs me I, I quite like the shot but one part that I'm just not sold on and I remember looking at this on the day and it was just almost unavoidable was this huge portion here which just does not have anything interesting happening there's nothing here that really works as subject matter or helps lead the eye to the waterfall itself the only way I could have corrected that was by moving myself further along this way and getting essentially closer to this edge um, then we wouldn't be looking at so much of it but as you probably saw in the video the river was cranking and would have <laughs> ended up in the drink really quick um, but that was something that was on my mind the whole time it's a shame there wasn't some bigger trees that st stood out you can see that one there but there's just not enough going on even that waterfall it's a hint of a subject but not quite enough um, so that's one part of the image that really uh, kind of bugs me in the frame but like I said, on the given day, I think this is probably the best that we could do. And I think overall, you know, a good image could be made there. I'd love to see your edit on this. You can see the color grading in this type of environment. I love the cooler tones. So there's a subtle blue tone up here in the mid-tones and highlights. And then even these greens in the forest that really works well with those blues that you can see. So it's a, it's a bluey green color grading going on in the shadows, mid-tones and even the highlights, which... I think just works well in this scenery and also when there's just no direct light in the landscape whatsoever. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in and look forward to seeing some of your edits on these files. Thank you, bye.